Museums are great for collecting and sharing history, but some elements of history can't be contained in the walls of a building. Well, like the historical aircraft from many decades ago. Recently, a lot of that history landed at Lebanon's airport for an event called a fly-in, an event full of memories and lessons from aviation's past. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If Man was enthralled with the idea of flying long before the Wright brothers' first flight. Come on and fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. And more than a hundred years later, we're still fascinated with the concept of traveling high above the ground to faraway destinations. Come on, fly with me. Let's take off in the blue. Recently, a group of unique aviators convened for what they call a fly-in. These volunteer pilots flew their vintage planes to the Lebanon airport so visitors could drop by examine their flying machines, and in some cases, even enjoy a ride. Many of the planes date back to World War II, including this B-17 bomber. This is a B-17 bomber, B-17G. During the war, it was really the icon out of England in the, in the European theater. Uh, they had thousands of them a day uh, en route from England, of course, to Germany, bombing Germany. Out of the 12,731 built, there's only about 11 left flying in the world. The Yankee Lady is part of the Yankee Air Museum fleet. It's go. an all-volunteer organization based out of Michigan, dedicated to preserving and sharing the history of World War II aircraft. We still get a lot of veterans come out every, uh, uh, every air show. We're out on the circuit every weekend someplace in the country. We hear some tremendous stories. Of course, they're all 83, 84 years old, and uh, I've had some come out and touch the airplane and walk away crying, uh, some that will not get on the airplane. Uh, uh, if you do finally get them to get on the airplane and take a ride, uh, uh, they come off smiling. It's like they lost a 200-pound monkey on their back they didn't know they had, evidently. Their last experience was probably a bad one. Out of the 12,000-some airplanes built, I've heard uh, about 4,000 were lost in uh, combat and or accidents. Duncan Empson's friend surprised him with a flight in this historic warbird. Duncan trained as a radio operator and right waist gunner toward the end of the war and was on his way overseas just as the war ended. He considers himself one lucky man. There were a lot who weren't lucky. Uh, the, uh, my Army career wasn't really all that bad. It's, it's something you don't want to do every day, but I'll always remember it. I wouldn't do it again for a million dollars, and I wouldn't take a million dollars for the experience. An event like this takes a lot of planning, organization, and of course, volunteers. The younger volunteers are out to prove that airplanes are good for more than just getting you from one place to another. Obviously, we've got a lot of history here. This is flying history instead of what you see in a museum or reading a book. Um, if, if you're anything like me, I learn history a whole lot better seeing, smelling, tasting, touching. All of these guys out here, they've come in on their own dollar. It's a volunteer deal um, just because they're all in the same attitude that I am as far as we're just kind of stewards of these airplanes and we try to maintain them and keep them flying for, for future generations. John Loudermilk made a short hop from Ashland City to share his 1941 N3N. Now when you think of a biplane you might think crop tester or air show stunt plane. This was actually a military plane that World War II pilots used to begin their aviation careers. That was strictly a trainer. That took farm boys, plow boys, and they put them in there, and that was nicknamed either the Yellow Canary or the Yellow Peril because a naval aviator was in peril of uh, not getting his wings if he couldn't pass you know, the, the final test in that. Pilots can be passionate about their aircraft, and like John, they can tell you the complete almost 70-year history of their planes. This plane started off in uh, Pensacola, Florida. A gentleman uh, had, had found it in a warehouse. This particular one is uh, one of the last ones ever built. It was built two weeks before the end of the war in 1945. During World War II, you used to taxi up, 
the student in the front would hop out, the new student would get in, and they'd stay in these things hour after hour training the new pilots. Completely restored it to new condition as you see it today. I've added some things to it. Spent nine years restoring it. I got it in Clearwater, Florida, and it took us 10 hours just to get to Shelbyville. <laughs> the thing, I was ready to get out. Yeah, not too many creature comforts at a biplane. Today, we think of flying as a means to an end. Airplanes are a means of getting us to faraway destinations, be it for pleasure or business, unlike these retired military aircraft that had a specific purpose during wartime. The hobbyists who maintain them enjoy sharing them with others and entertaining themselves at the same time. Michael Kennedy, a retired Air Force fighter pilot, brought his BT-13, a World War II trainer, it's a pleasure for me to be able to share this because there's so few of these that, uh, you know, when you see them on the ground, it's one thing, but when you actually can hear them in the air, airplanes are not a static thing. Uh, you can have them in a museum, but airplanes need to be heard and seen in their element, and that's in flight. And that's, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, because I just love doing it. Well, after our rookie crews flied around Nashville in the B-17, it was time for a photograph of themselves and the esteemed Warbird. Get one. one that's reminiscent of pictures you've seen from the war days. For a good reason, our bunch was a little more relaxed than the original crew. 